Welcome to the Insightful Professor. The purpose of this video is to assist users of Oracle database software in understanding what is called the multi-tenant architecture. This architecture was introduced in the Oracle database 12C family and was extended in versions 18C and 19C. It's a bit more complex than the architecture that was employed prior to 12C. If you're familiar with the Oracle 11G Express Edition database, that was an easy to download and easy to install piece of software. I recently completed a video on downloading and installing Oracle database 18C Express Edition. And one of the things I had to talk about was the idea of setting up the communication between the client and the server, where we were talking about what is called a pluggable database. So to provide some background for folks interested in understanding the 18C architecture, I've created this video. And we'll talk a bit about the difference between CDBs and PDBs and a whole bunch of other terminology that's relevant to the multi-tenant architecture. This is not an exhaustive study, but it provides a basic foundation for anyone who will be working with an Oracle 18C or 12C uh, da database in terms of being able to understand what we mean by the multi-tenant architecture. See, the growth of database use and the advances in hardware technology have enabled companies to implement a huge number of databases, maybe hundreds of databases, potentially thousands of databases exist within various organizations. And these tend to run on different platforms and different physical servers. It can be quite demanding to maintain a large number of systems like this, both from the perspective of the hardware that's involved and from the people that are needed to maintain these systems. So modern server hardware has advanced considerably over the way it existed, say, a, a, a decade or so ago. And this has enabled the software to be modified in such a way that now, instead of having a single database on a single server, we can consolidate these databases. So this is one of the potential benefits of the multi-tenant architecture to take multiple databases and consolidate them such that on a single computer on a single system, more than one database can be operational. So it becomes more effic uh, efficient from a hardware perspective and more efficient from people management. So the process of consolidating data from multiple databases into one database on one computer is effectively what we mean when we talk about database consolidation. A couple of critical terms or concepts are necessary as we get into the discussion of multi-tenancy. The architecture introduces the notion of what's called a container database, and more effectively, a multi-tenant container database, or a CDB, and a pluggable database called a PDB. So we're going to have to define these terms and various other terms to give you an idea of what the multi-tenant architecture is like and how this differs from previous versions of Oracle. We've thrown out the term container. Let, let's provide a definition. A container is a logical collection of data or metadata. And that distinction is important. And we refer to the multi-tenant container database, or CDB, as housing effectively the metadata, not the application data. So this will include zero, one, or many customer created pluggable databases or PDBs. It is the pluggable database or the PDB that effectively is what we consider to be the application database. So when an application connects to the database using the Oracle Net technology, what happens is they are connecting to the PDB, not the CDB. The PDB is effectively the same idea as what we had prior to Oracle 12C, 
we refer to a pre-12C database using the current tech terminology as being a non-CDB, a non-multi-tenant container database. The concept of container and pluggable and those terms didn't really apply prior to 12C. So because of the change in architecture, the new terminology is being used. But if you're familiar with earlier versions of Oracle Database, we can use your understanding of the old technology to relate to the current terminology. So if you've worked with Oracle Database prior to 12C, you work with what we simply call a database. But using today's terminology, we can qualify that database as being a non-CDB database. That database contained the application data and your application connected through the Oracle network technology to that database. That's where the application data resided. In the initial release of Oracle 12C, the multi-tenant architecture, we had the ability to have up to 252 pluggable databases. It sounds like an ample amount. But with 12C release 2, they extended that to 4,000 databases. So you can have one CDB and potentially many, hundreds or thousands of pluggable databases within that single CDB. So from the view of a client connecting to the database, the client connects to the PDB. That's where the application data resides. From the view of the operating system as to what is actually running on this box, that's where the CDB is the database. So it's a bit confusing, but hopefully it'll become clearer as we move along. A container could be either a PDB or it could be what's called the root container, sometimes just referred to as root. The root is a collection of schemas, schema objects, non-schema objects to which all PDBs belong. Effectively, the CDB then is the root for all of the PDBs contained within that CDB. So every CDB has the following containers. It has exactly one root, this is referred to as CDB dollar sign root. It has exactly one seed database, which is a PDB from which we can then build other PDBs. It's effectively like a template, kind of a starter database. This is referred to as the PDB dollar sign seed. So we have one of those within a CDB. Then the user created. PDBs pertain to specific applications. We perhaps could have something for human resources, keeping that data separate from other data. We could have something for accounts payable. That could be yet another distinct PDB. For any application that we might have within our system, we might have a distinct pluggable database. And all of these pluggable databases, or many of them, could be bundled together within a single CDB. So it's possible that when we first set up a CDB, we have the root and we have the seed, but we've not created any application PDBs. So we could have zero. But then we could have one or possibly many, as we said previously, up to a couple hundred or up to a few thousand, depending upon the version of Oracle that we're running. There are no PDBs in existence initially after the CDB has been created. So the PDBs serve to isolate the data and the operations so that distinct applications and users could have access to certain PDBs, but not to others. Yet, all of these PDBs could be under the umbrella of the single CDB. So in that case, by keeping each PDB separate and distinct from the others, when a user connects to a PDB, they don't realize that this is one of many pluggable databases within the same container. They view it as a traditional non-CDB, a pre-Oracle 12C type of database. Here's a little diagram to put this together. 
Uh, this diagram was based upon the initial release of Oracle 12C, where we could have up to 252 pluggable databases. We could change this diagram where we say PDB 4096, uh, if we wanted to be more up to date with a later version of 12C uh, or with 18C. But the point is we would have many, or potentially many, pluggable databases and a single multi-tenant container database or CDB. So this single container database that is the CDB is the root. This contains the Oracle system metadata. That would be Oracle supplied metadata. Then we have each PDB, which contains the application data, but also metadata for that application. For example, if I create an academic database and I have a course table, a class table, staff table, student table, those would all be within the pluggable database and the metadata that describes them would of course be relevant to that pluggable database, but not to other pluggable databases, nor would it have been supplied by Oracle. So therefore, we have two types of metadata to consider. In the root database, that's where we have the Oracle supplied kind of general metadata. And for example, what that might include would be something like uh, Oracle supplied PL SQL packages. So you look at the packages that are part of the Oracle standard database. There's metadata to describe these. Well, every PDB would have access to these, but the definition of them would be defined within the root. But when we look at those academic tables I was describing, they might reside in PDB1. So the metadata that pertains to those and their descriptions would be in PDB1 and only in PDB1. But the data for those tables would also be in PDB1. So that's how we're starting to kind of partition this. Kind of, kind of an interesting approach that Oracle has taken. And it's a in very interesting architecture as we look at it. So what we'll do is we'll take a little bit closer look at how this works by hitting the database for just a moment. To demonstrate some key points regarding containers in a multi-tenant environment, we'll look at two containers created during the installation of Oracle 18C Express Edition. First, there's the root, a multi-tenant container database or a CDB, and second, there's a pluggable database or a PDB. Let's start up SQL Plus and connect to the database. What we'll do is we'll connect as the user system. I'll not provide any connect string information. So by default, I'm going to go to a particular database that was established as the default database for a connection during the installation of the software provide the password, and the password was set up during the installation. So watch the video on how to, how to download and install Oracle 18C Express Edition, and you'll get information uh, about this. Now, Oracle, like other relational databases, stores metadata. The Oracle database refers to the metadata repository as the data dictionary. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to query some of the metadata. I'll be querying the data dictionary to demonstrate the distinction between the different containers. So the data dictionary in each container in a CDB is separate. They're distinct from one another. We mentioned the term current container. When we establish a database connection, we actually are connecting to one of the containers and establishing this as the current container. This container could be a CDB or any of the PDBs of the CDB. Remember that each session has exactly one current container at any point in time. The current container is the container whose data dictionary, whose metadata, is used to resolve names and privilege authorizations. So let's take a look at a few queries to demonstrate this. I've got a query that will allow me to identify 
the current container. I've connected to a container. Which container have I connected to? Let's take this query and fire it up. And notice it tells me I'm connected to CDB dollar sign root. So the default with the Oracle 18C Express Edition installation is to establish a connection to the root database. Now the database can be connected to using what's called a host string. So I can say let's connect as the user system at XE. And this is set up for us also automatically during the installation of 18C Express Edition. So I could either be silent with respect to the host string and not say what database I'm connecting to, or I could make it explicit and say I'm connecting to XE. Again, supply the password. And now when I take the same query and run it, notice that again it shows that I've connected to root. So this is the default database. One of the problems with the way the software installs is it doesn't create a host string to allow you to connect directly to the PDBs that are out there. So let's take a look at connecting to a PDB. I created a host string. And to see how I did that, review the video on installing Oracle 18C Express Edition. But what I want to show you is if I connect to that database, that container has this user system, XEPDB1. This is the host string for my pluggable database. It's a different container. Provide the password. And now I take the same query that I've run twice. I'll run it now. But remember, I've connected to a different container. And sure enough, what we see is it tells us that we are connected to XEPDB1, not the root, which is a CDB, but to one of the pluggable databases. Let's take a look at the tables that are owned by the user student. I mentioned the academic tables. Let's take a look at these. These reside in a schema called student, or they're said to be owned by the user student. The schema and the set of tables exists within the PDB and can only be accessed when the PDB is the current container. So now we see that I've connected to the PDB. Let's take another query, the one that says let's find all of the tables in the student schema. And I'll fire this up. And we get a whole list of tables. And here are the academic tables, which were mentioned previously in the video. Uh, department, course, faculty, staff, and, and so on. These are within the student schema, and that schema exists within this PDB, which I've called XEPDB1. Try one more thing. Let's connect as system, again, withholding any information as to which container, so that we will connect to the CDB. And again, we'll confirm that we have connected to the CDB by running this query. And it tells, tells us, yes, you're at the root. And now what I'm going to do is take this query that identifies the tables in the student schema and try to run that from within the CDB. And it comes up empty. The reason is the PDB contains application data, the CDB effectively just contains metadata. So it turns out that I could have PDB1 holding the academic tables, PDB2 holding human resource tables, and other PDBs holding other tables, and they don't see one another, there's no conflict, and those tables are not accessible from anywhere outside of the PDB in which they reside, including being inaccessible from within the CDB. So this is how Oracle keeps these things separate. 
the details go far beyond what I prepare to talk about in this particular video, uh, but it's kind of interesting how Oracle uh, protects the content of one PDB from another, even though they're sitting right side by side. Now, one other query to take a look at is while I'm connected to the root database here, or the CDB, I'm going to run a query that tells me information about what pluggable databases exist or what pluggable databases to which I might have access. And when we run this, because we're connected to the CDB, we'll see a list of all pluggable databases within that CDB. And here we see XEPDB1, and we also see PDB dollar sign seed, the seed database. Notice that the seed database, as I had mentioned previously, is read only. It's effectively a template that Oracle provides for building the basis of a pluggable database. So when XEPDB1 was created to hold our application data, it used information within PDB dollar sign seed to kind of get the game underway, to get things started. So those are the two pluggable databases. Let's suppose that I connect to a PDB, XEPDB1, and now I run the same query. That is, show me what PDBs exist. When I run the query while connected to a PDB, I see information only about that current PDB. So the point here is that the pluggable databases, even though they reside within a particular CDB, they are effectively isolated from one another. That means that the content of each pluggable database is accessible only from within that pluggable database. That is only when that pluggable database is the current container. So this is how, again, the data would be protected. I've connected a system in both the CDB and the PDB, but we saw that student existed only in the PDB. So let's return to the presentation to discuss how users and schemas are defined for different types of containers. Well, we provided a brief explanation of containers in the multi tenant environment. Now it's time to talk about another area that has changed with respect to the database when we're talking about multi-tenancy, the notion of database users. In a multi-tenant content database, or CDB, we have something called a common user. This is a user that is defined within the CDB and can connect to the root, but also that same identity, the same username, exists within every PDB that has been created and every PDB that will be created. For example, in our demonstration or discussion of containers, we connected to the root and we also connected to our PDB, XEPDB1, using system. It's the same username. So if we were to create another PDB, such as a XEPDB2, then system would automatically exist within that PDB as well. The point is that the name, the identity, is common to all containers, whether those containers be CDBs or PDBs. So every common user can connect to and perform operations within the root and can also connect to the PDB and may have specific privileges within the PDB that differ from those of other PDBs for that user or from the privileges of the CDB. So every common user in Oracle is either one that was supplied by the Oracle system, such as Sys and System administrator accounts, or one that has been created on site, what we call a user created common user. Another type of user or another category is what we call a local user. When we discussed the user student as being a schema and owning the academic tables, the student user 
was defined locally within XEPDB1, but student did not exist within the CDB. So student does not exist across the board, hence student is not a common user. So we can create users within specific PDBs and they exist only within the PDBs in which they've been created. Let's summarize some characteristics of common users. A common user can log into any container, including root, in which it has been granted the create session privilege. The common user need not have the same privileges in every container, but typically if we're looking at administrative users, then they probably will have the same privileges within each PDB, but that's not a strict requirement. We could grant additional privileges to a common user in a particular PDB and not grant those same additional privileges within another PDB. The name of every user created common user, that is installation defined rather than Oracle supplied common user names, has to begin with a special set of characters. C, either in uppercase or lowercase, followed by two number characters or pound signs. Oracle supplied user names don't have to follow this convention and names such as sys and system obviously do not adhere to this convention. No local username may begin with the characters of C and a couple of pound signs because this would suggest or actually indicate that it was a common user and obviously it's not if it's a local user. The names of common users have to use certain character sets, uh, or they could be ASCII characters or Ipsodic characters. And a common user resides in root, but has to be able to connect to other containers, PDBs, using the same identity, the same username. So what tools are available to us? Uh, we have SQL Plus and SQL Developer common tools used by developers, users, and perhaps administrators to connect to a non-CDB. We can also use these to connect to CDBs and PDBs. In addition, if you're an administrator, then you can use tools like the Oracle Database Configuration Assistant, Oracle Enterprise Manager Cloud Control, and there's another tool that was introduced in 12C called the Enterprise Manager Express. These tools permit connection to different containers within a multi-tenant environment. These tools that you're accustomed to using in a non-multi-tenant environment can also be used to allow connections in a multi-tenant environment. So what is it that we've covered? Well, we've introduced the concept of multi-tenancy and the multi-tenant architecture. We indicated why Oracle moved in the direction of multi-tenancy. We presented the concepts of containers, specifically a multi-tenant container database or a CDB, as well as pluggable database, another kind of container or PDB. These are said to be non-CDBs because they contain the application data and they're not containers that contain other databases, whereas a CDB is such a container. There are two classes of users. There are common users and there are local users. And the local users are defined for PDBs and the common users are defined such that they can access the root and other containers, PDBs. We explain the notion of current container, which applies when you are connecting to a container database. You connect to a container, perform operations, and if you then connect to another container, you have changed the current container. You no longer have access during that session to the previous container. So there's only one container that is deemed to be current. So we discuss that in some detail. And we also identified what front-end tools are available for working in a multi-tenant environment. So hopefully you found the video to be informative. I know the material is confusing 
if you're comfortable with the pre-Oracle 12C or pre-multi-tenant architecture. But hopefully you found this to be useful in gaining an initial understanding of the basics. And again, the background would be useful if you're doing an install of Oracle 18C. Rather than just perform some operations and have the software installed, it's nice to understand what is happening. And hopefully I've provided some background to assist you in that regard. So if you found the video helpful, uh, please consider giving a thumbs up uh, to acknowledge that, offer any comments, and we'll attempt to respond to those and help you understand the material. Consider subscribing to the channel. And once again, thanks for watching.